This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and today I want to give you all a quick overview of one of the most widely used software tools in the engineering world. Not only is practically every BattleBot and combat robot designed with this kind of software, but almost everything around you is probably designed by an engineer with some form of it. Today, we're talking about computer-aided design software, also known as 3D modeling software, or CAD, and why it's so amazing, and how you can start using it for free. Why use computer-aided design? I hear from people all the time, BattleBots are so amazing and complicated, I could never do anything like that. Well, that's simply not true at all. There's never been a better time to get involved in the sport of combat robotics. There are so many cheap and easy ways to get custom parts made, even from metals like aluminum, titanium, and steel, without needing to spend thousands of dollars on specialized tools and equipment. But, in order to get parts made by a manufacturing company like today's sponsor PCBWay, you first need to have a 3D model of that part. Or in some cases, you just need a 2D drawing, which can also be easily made in CAD programs. From this point on, I'll refer to computer-aided design as CAD, which is the industry standard term used by engineers. And you might be surprised to learn that the same exact programs used by high-tech startup companies and massive corporations can be used by any hobbyist for free or with what a tiny fraction of what a professional license would cost. If you want to keep seeing what awesome stuff CAD can do, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to see all of my upcoming videos. I frequently do build design overviews where I show off all my robots' designs in detail, plus I sell full access to the CAD models of a couple of my robots on my web store, and those can be used in basically any CAD software program, if you want to see in detail exactly how I designed my bots or make a copy of one yourself. So, how does CAD software help? There's a million ways that CAD design makes it easier to build a robot. This is not an exhaustive list by any means, but I'll delve into a few of the big ones. First is weight. BattleBots must be under 250 pounds, with smaller weight classes ranging down to as little as 150 grams. Weight is paramount, so figuring out how to keep track is vital. Sure, you probably can't get accurate to tiny fractions of a gram, because there are always real-world variances to materials that are idealized in software, but it's unbelievably helpful nonetheless. I also provide free 3D models for all physical products that I sell on my store, which should have their correct real-world weights when imported into Fusion 360 and some other programs. Second is space and component layouts. Figuring out how to fit all of the parts of your robot together so there aren't any parts rubbing on your motors or pulleys and there's enough room for all your electronics is critical. You can usually find drawings on suppliers' websites for common components and make a mock-up of CAD to insert into your robot. Some suppliers even offer complete 3D models on their websites like McMaster Car, Fingertech, and Servo City, etc. Typically, the weight of these parts can then be adjusted to match what the manufacturer says they should weigh to help keep more in line with that first point. Third is construction. Not only is having a 3D model of a complex assembly a massive beneficial tool when assembling that thing, but the assembly can also help to avoid some major pitfalls. In software, it's easy to accidentally design parts in ways that don't really fit together in real life. You could have parts that overlap or intersect. You might want to check exactly how many of each unique part and each type of screw or nut you have in the entire assembly. You might want to look at a section view, which is a digital slice through an assembly, or even a hidden line view that reveals all the interior geometry of a part or an assembly at once. It's easy to accidentally place two screws too close together to have them intersect, or accidentally make parts in a stack up that are too long to fit together properly. You can also use CAD to quickly change the size of a part to account for the real-life size variations that are inherent to all things. Not all sheet metal parts will be the same, and it's useful to ensure your parts will still fit together or be under a given weight limit, even if the material is thicker than expected. Fourth is manufacturing. With a model of a 2D part, you can export a flat face and send that to a company like Send Cut Send to have it cut out from flat sheets of metal, plastic, carbon fiber, and more. With a 3D part model, you can get it 3D printed from plastic, as 3D printers are now relatively affordable. I even run my own 3D printing service, which you can use if you don't want to invest in owning your own 3D printer. And you can get parts that are 3D modeled, CNC machined in metals like titanium, steel, or aluminum with my sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a manufacturing company based in Shenzhen, China that primarily specializes in, surprise, PCBs. I most recently got these custom printed circuit boards made for my 3-pound robot division, and they've been working great so far in testing. PCBWay also offers CNC machining services, which will let you get a custom part made with incredible precision and accuracy from metal, provided you have designed the part accordingly. I've also used this service on my other 3-pound robot, Shrapnel Mine, 
to get these black anodized aluminum parts for the servo arm and front pivots. PCBWay will let you upload your part files and give you an instant quote to see how much making your parts will cost. They also offer industrial 3D printing services, which will allow printing in far more advanced materials and much greater quantities than anything I can do myself with my hobby grade printers. Check them out at the link below. Fifth is flexibility. Making changes to a finished robot in real life is often quite cumbersome, and it's easy to get backed into a corner by design decisions you made long in the past. I found this out the hard way, making small improvements over two years to Division version 2, before I finally decided to start over from scratch with an all-new version 3. In CAD, however, it costs nothing but time to go back and change things, even things you did at the very beginning of your design process. Battlebots often need a bunch of different armor configurations as well, and being able to immediately switch between them virtually to check how much the whole bot should weigh is critical. You don't want to spend hours putting on your heaviest armor, only to find it puts you 5 pounds over the weight limit due to the other things you've added. Sixth is analysis. Not only can CAD tools help you design a part, but it can help you see if that part's strong enough to withstand the forces it'll be subjected to, if you know what they'll be. Even if you don't, as is so often the case with combat robotics, where super random and chaotic things happen constantly, that's okay! You can subject all of your weapons or frame panels to the same loading conditions to see which one will handle it the best, where the weak spots might be that should be thicker, where you need to add rounds and fillets to strengthen your parts, and where there might be a bunch of dead weight you can cut out to make the part lighter without sacrificing on strength. There are even some super advanced tools that will generate geometry for you when told how a part will be loaded in order to get the absolute best possible strength to weight in your part. I designed Division's weapon uprights this way, and the Valkyrie BattleBots team does this a lot with their frame parts. Software options. Now, there are thousands of specialized CAD programs used in different industries from architecture to video game character models, but in the robotics space, there are only a few dominant software programs. There are really only a few that most BattleBots teams design with among those, and they happen to be the most common ones used in engineering because, surprise, a lot of us are engineers, like me. The three programs you'll probably see the most often are SolidWorks, Inventor, and Fusion 360. Both Fusion and Inventor are made by the same company, Autodesk. Autodesk offers totally free educational versions engineers. of these programs with nearly all features available if you are a student. If not, you can still get a personal license of Fusion 360 for free that has nearly all of the same 3D modeling capabilities as the paid commercial version that I use. There are some limitations on advanced features, but if you're actually a hobbyist, you probably won't run into these at all. They only impact the use of simulations, renders, and machining or cam. I'll put a link down below for all of these programs. Inventor is a bit more advanced and harder to learn than Fusion 360. It's a lot more similar to SolidWorks, but there isn't a free personal version of Inventor. SolidWorks also isn't free, but if you're already learning to use it in school and then graduate and want to keep using it, or for whatever reason you prefer it to Fusion 360 and want to pay for it, you can get a maker license for $99 a year or $10 a month. SolidWorks doesn't have nearly as many capabilities as Fusion 360 without expensive add-ons, however. And because Fusion is free, you will find about 100 times as many YouTube tutorials and learning guides online for Fusion. I definitely recommend trying Fusion out if you haven't ever used a CAD design program before. Autodesk also makes another popular CAD program called Tinkercad, which works great as a pulling teeth simulator if you hate yourself. Seriously though, there really isn't too much to Tinkercad that makes it that much easier to use than Fusion. It is kind of marketed towards kids, but I think even a middle schooler could easily learn Fusion 360. And Fusion just has so many more capabilities than Tinkercad, plus it makes the workflow so much easier once you get beyond even the most basic of designs. Full disclosure, Autodesk hasn't paid me to say anything nice about their products, and I'm paying out of pocket for a commercial license. However, Autodesk is one of the sponsors of the BattleBots TV show, not our team by the way. And they provided every BattleBots team with an exclusive 30% discount for Fusion 360's commercial version, which I paid for it with. I personally started using Fusion 360 as a sophomore in college, and hadn't even been involved with combat robotics before. I've simply loved using it ever since, which is why I recommend it. Getting started. If you want to get started with Fusion 360 or a CAD program on your own, there's thousands of free online tutorials. If you do decide to go with Fusion 360, I'll link a few of my own videos down below that focus on it. I would also strongly recommend checking out the Product Design Online YouTube channel and their Fusion 360 for Absolute Beginners video, which I'll also link below. SolidWorks also has a good deal of tutorial content freely available, and because it's more professional, there are paid classes you can take. You could even take a full-on SolidWorks certification course that might help you get an engineering job someday. Conclusion. That's all I have for you today. If you'd like this video, click like. 
If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and click the bell icon. And as always, thanks for watching.